Hi, this is Dennis Peathers. Welcome to Joining Jesus, where I get the opportunity to meet people from around the world who are joining Jesus in his mission. This time, I'm meeting somebody from Nepal. His name is Dan Lama. So, Dan, how are you? Oh, yeah, I am fine. By the grace of God and all of your uh, prayer, the troop of uh, International Ministries family. So, I am <laughs> doing well and fine, yeah. Great, Dan. Well, it's so good to see you. A long way away in Nepal. It's a long way from where I am in England. Hey, just tell me a little bit about you. Um, tell me about your life. Are you married? Do you have children? Just just give us a picture. Who is who is Dan? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm Pastor Don Lama, and uh, I have uh, three daughters and mm -hmm. uh, and also one wife. And uh, I'm doing the, as a, a pastor ministry and also that are running by faith that are from his home. Uh, and also same time, I'm giving the uh, training, the online Bible school uh, to the pastors, leaders, and young people, uh, and also uh, reaching gospel through the uh, healing gospel crusade, wow. and personal, uh, that door-to-door uh, uh, -door ministry. And also uh, we have a goal and vision to mm. build churches plant this year. Uh, 2021. So, mm. uh, so that we are, uh, and also focusing the train the young generation, wow. equip, train, and uh, challenge them and motivation them. Uh, so, and also through the social media, uh, mm. social work, like uh, we are making toilet and hand palm, and also mm. like uh, feeding the uh, poor people and uh, street people. Wow. And uh, so God is doing amazing and awesome this COVID-19, uh, this during a uh, pandemic time. So, mm. uh, and also through the uh, sewing school, uh, sewing masonry school, and also free tuition center also going on. Mm. So uh, through all this uh, social transform life, we are uh, changing the community and the life of the people. So yeah. uh, we are uh, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ as a full time by mm. faith. Uh, since 2009, wow. till today, God sounds, is uh, helping me and uh, doing the full-time ministry. It sounds to me like it's more than full-time. If I am, um, if I was going to name this this interview with with you, I would think I think I would call it "and also" because you said "and also" so many times as you were sharing what you're doing, which is just so exciting to hear. And I'm going to come back to that in in a little while and just find out a bit more about some of these things that you're doing as you join Jesus Mission, but. Just give us a picture, would you, of um, what, what is it like to be a Christian in Nepal? Is everybody a Christian or are they different faiths? Or just give us a picture of what it's like being a Christian living in the country of Nepal. What what, what, what does it feel like being there? Yeah. Uh, in Nepal, uh, has uh, 33 million people and uh, uh, like 80 people, 80 persons, people are Hinduism and 10% people are Buddhist, and 5% people are Muslim, and 1% right. are the Christians people in Nepal. So right. Right. Uh, mostly Christians are, uh, they have a faith and a strong. Uh, the right. Christians in Nepal are very, very strong in faith and uh, in God because of uh, that uh, they have uh, nothing. They are yeah. very poor and they have nothing, but also they are uh, very, very happy and the smiling face, <laughs> And they are practicing to live by faith, walk by faith. So yeah. uh, most of the Christians are very, very revival and fire in Nepal country. And uh, so uh, they are uh, very, very uh, in fasting and prayer. Yeah. They go to the jungle and uh, they study the Bible and so preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. So yeah. uh, that most of the Christians are uh, very like, a, like, a, uh, like angels and uh, Jesus. They are... Uh, walking uh, you know, with Jesus Christ and every day practicing their mm. faith and uh, they are uh, trying to uh, that level their faith and they're strong in God. So I see the uh, surrounding all the churches and uh, believers and the uh, women and the young people mm. are very, very strong in faith and they are praying uh, and also they are living uh, very uh, strong. But mm. only the few of the uh, for some of the Christians are just uh, they are uh, only the uh, like they are involved with the uh, like drugs and alcohol mm. and uh, they smoke and uh, few other Christians are 
just a nominal Christians. Mm. They just mm. come to us, uh, church service, and after that they are not preaching, not going to the for evangelism. Uh, mm. On the few few of them are looks like a traditional Christians, but uh, yeah. I see the, most of the Nepal uh, believers, uh, Christians in Nepal are very very uh, faithful and uh, strong in yeah. God, and they are uh, really going to every time going to jungle and uh, mountain. Uh, yeah. For prayer, spend time in prayer. Uh, mm. So, uh, because of they want to grow in faith and also strong in the Lord all the time. Yes. So I get. I'm just trying to see a picture of what you're saying as you're, and it's a, it's a really interesting one. So, you said one percent of people in Nepal are Christian. Mm. 80 percent were Hindu. I think you said so. Yeah. Many 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 Hindus. Just one yeah. percent are Christian. But of that 1% of Christians, it sounds like many of them are quite committed. What about you? So how did how did you come to be? How come you're not a Hindu or a Buddhist or a Muslim? How come you're a Christian? <laughs> what happened? Yeah. <laughs> uh, my father is a first, uh, first generation Christian. Mm. And we are came from Buddhist uh, family. Right. And originally, we are uh, from Tibet the, in the, in the, okay. like, um, yeah. uh, the past uh, as uh, yeah. we study history, and we came from my grandfather and my father also preached the Buddha, uh, like a Buddhist family mm. background, and they are like a priest mm. yeah. and yeah. worship like idols, and uh, they are doing like a priest uh, work in mm. before. And uh, one day my mother was very sick, very, uh, very almost died. Mm. And uh, they took the my father took my mother to a hospital and uh, and uh, their priest and temple and many many places, but could not heal. Uh, she almost going to die. And right. at last, they heard that if somebody invite the pastor or if you go to the church, mm. if you pray, if you trust, then it will be put, heal. Then yes. um, my my father invites one pastor, and mm. uh, he came to. Uh, my house and uh, pray for to my mom, my mother, mm. and mm. after prayer, immediately she uh, heal and better, wow. and uh, slowly uh, after one week completely heal. Wow! And that time how, I, hey, let me ask you how old how old were you at this time when this happened? How old were you? Uh, that time I was I was two years old. You were yeah. so you were just a little a little boy. Uh, two, yeah, two years old. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, and heal, and then that time. I was born in Buddhist family, but when mm. I was two years old, mm. and my uh, my parents accept Jesus Christ that time after healing, wow. and yeah. then when I I became a uh, seven years old, that time I got privilege, privilege to study the one of the Krishna school, mm. uh, because my my parents are very poor, they cannot feed and they cannot send to the school because that yeah. are very very poor, and mm. uh, we got by the grace of God we got the privilege to study the uh, Krishna school. Mm. And then, and then I go to the Sunday school. I got privileged to go to Sunday school. And mm. when I uh, became 13 years old, mm. that time I I realized that Jesus is my personal savior, wow. and I wow. accept as as my personal savior, mm. Jesus Christ. And then I go to the uh, Sunday school. And then mm. when I grow up, I joined to the youth fellowship. Mm. And when I became 15 years old, I took the water baptism mm. in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise then uh, when I 16 years old. I began to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ wow. from that till today. Let me, ask, let me ask you a question because I'm, I, I want to get to the preaching of the gospel in just a moment. But before that, something I'd love to ask you is, um, so you were brought up as a Buddhist in a Buddhist family. And then this miracle of God uh, with your mother, which is just praise God, wonderful news to hear. And that changed. How, what, what was it like? Um, turning from being a buddhist into becoming a christian i mean did, were there any things about being a buddhist that it was difficult to leave behind was it a challenge for you to stop being a buddhist and start being a christian what was that like to change from in a sense one faith group to another um i i, I really thank god and uh, thank my parents uh, because uh, when i um since my life from uh, that uh, from buddhist to christians mm. uh, because um, i see the many uh, peoples, those who are uh, in the Buddhist family and the Hindu and Muslim family, uh, they looks like a uh, like a you know living uh, like a from out of the Bible, and uh, their life is very 
are rough and uh, mm. critical and uh, they drink and they speak and uh, smoke and they fight and mm. um, you know they do whatever they like yeah. so yeah. and they have no hope they have no salvation mm. they have no eternal life and they mm. have no peace maybe they have uh, many things like a building car and money everything position but they don't have a peace and hope but mm. i feel that um, uh, yeah. really when when we accept jesus christ when we know jesus is our savior and he died on the cross for our sin he mm. he, he forgave our uh, mistakes and sins so i feel really lucky and very blessed uh, because we have a, though we have nothing but we have a peace in in, in our life and uh, mm. we have a hope for future mm. and we have a hope of for the salvation is secure so uh, i really bless and uh, really uh, that uh, thankful god and i praise god and i thank you my parents so uh, uh, i i have no experience uh, that the buddhist family and you know in the family because i grew up the christian family mm. in christian mm. school so that i don't mm. have uh, any experience uh, yeah. about that uh, uh, buddhist family Mm. Uh, so i really thankful that i from childhood i yeah. got privileged to grow up the christian school and uh, like learn how to pray how to communicate with christ and how to study mm. the word of god and uh, from childhood i i i got privileged so i very very thankful god so mm. i heard the voice when i was 7 years old i got i i heard the voice from god mm. so god has chosen me for the, his kingdom and for his harvest to preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ mm. all the nations in Nepal mm. country so i, I feel that, that uh, i i feel that better uh, christian's life and uh, that uh, buddhist family other other religions are yeah, very yeah no, i get you i love um, i love i just love sensing your enthusiasm it's uh, even as you're speaking um i can feel the words you're saying they're not just coming from your head but they're coming from your heart as well and uh, i guess as i was hearing you talk about the difference between your christian faith and maybe some of the other faith groups that the difference i guess is that for those religions a lot of it is just about following the religion it sounds to me like you didn't just change religion but you actually met jesus in a personal way and that personal faith seems to be as i'm listening to you what what really drives you so let me ask you some more questions uh, so yeah. you 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 you've talked already a few times and I love watching every time you say it your face lights up and you raise your arms in the air which is great and you talk about preaching preaching the gospel preaching the gospel going into <laughs> the hills and and the forests and preaching I'm, so I'm getting a picture in my head I I almost see you um running everywhere preaching the gospel um and in a minute I want to ask you a bit more about that but 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 one thing I'd like to ask you before that we think about Jesus um and in in the ministry i lead the rooftop we talk about the mission of jesus joining jesus mission um just just briefly uh, when you think about the mission of jesus you know what he came to do what, what, what how, how would you describe what do you think jesus mission really is what is it that jesus came to the world for yes i feel that uh, uh, when jesus uh, was in the earth uh, in the world that uh, he preaching the gospel of jesus christ uh, uh, that the village and the poor people and uh, he not only the preaching the gospel but also he feeding the poor people and serving the poor people and helping the poor people as a uh, being a servant uh, and also uh, when he uh, he is in the ministry time jesus uh, teach the uh, the twelve disciples on the mountain he took and uh, give the training uh, mm. and uh, and also he uh, he passed in prayer 40 days and nights uh mm. 40 days and nights he pray on the mountain but mm. not only the fasting but also he invite uh, he took the he 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 select the twelve disciples and he train he equip mm. and mm. Uh, that all the twelve disciples sent all over the nations today they went to the india thomas saint thomas went to india and mm. other disciples also went to the different nations so uh, uh jesus pray for not only that he pray for the sick people he mm-hmm. deliver the all the sick people and uh, heal all the sick people all the cancer all the blind all the deaf and uh, mm-hmm. all the bleeding women and the uh, crippled every kinds of 
disease and heal in Jesus name so uh, Jesus he really uh, he he was when he was in the earth and uh, preaching the gospel he he preached the gospel he feeding the people he prayer and fast he teaching the other disciples him, mm. and also he deliverance and prayer and heal all the sickness and all the disease mm. and also not only that but also he love all the world all the peoples all the community mm. he loves uh, very much so that i really really mm. um, i learned many things from jesus and uh, i same today i'm i try to follow and i really god had given that dream and vision mm. uh, so and today uh, i i feel that really that the ministry is needed the people are hungry for gospel in the remote area in the village poor people so today i follow jesus christ what he doing uh, when i study the bible i i i learn many things from the inspire and a very uh, challenging of through that uh, jesus ministry so today i try to walk and uh, in faith and uh, strong in faith and walk walk with jesus christ and what he did uh, when, what he did when he was in prison uh, when he was a uh, uh, ministry time so today i am following and i try to my base doing the ministry in the village so i love to go to the village and uh, himalayas and remote area persecution place not the city only but uh, basically i focus the wherever you no know, reaching the gospel no one going to the evangelists and missionary going remote area and there uh, we you know, try to reach and like walk mm. five hours seven wow. hours two days walk the mountain just now uh, mm. yesterday we came back mission trip uh, remote area very like 3000 high uh, level meter high uh, uh, 3, meters, level. man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, excited. Yeah. <laughs> well, let, let me, let me just, uh, I mean, I love listening to you. I could listen to you for a long time because I can sense the passion, but, but it, it sounds like the Jesus that you're joining, you know, the mission you're joining, the Jesus you're following as you understand him it excites me. The, the things that I just, as I was listening to you, I hear you say are Jesus love is his motivation. That's a big thing. He, the love that Jesus has, um, the power of God working through him is something that I keep hearing you say, the miracles, the things he did, the, the extraordinary things. You, you, talk, you talk about equipping disciples as well. He did that, and then he could send them out. Uh, and, and I guess the other thing that you, you talk about a lot as well is, is his focus on the poor, the people outside the broken. So as I get that picture in my head of a powerful, loving, disciple-making Jesus focusing on the people with need, you, you mentioned a few minutes ago when I started uh, talking to you about some of the things that you're doing uh, in Nepal. I, I really would love just to spend a few minutes getting underneath those a bit and finding out a bit more about them. So just, just tell me the things that you're doing. Um, how, how are you doing? What, what, what does it look like when you're doing? You talked about orphanages and you talked about traveling and preaching and you talked about a, a discipleship school and so on and so on. Just give us a bit more information so anybody that's watching this can really get a picture of uh, as you're joining Jesus and his mission, Dan, you know, as you're doing it. What does that what does it look like for you day by day to be doing that? Just give us a bit more information about what, it, what it's like when you're doing it. Uh, my heart uh, is uh, like, um, you know, I want to how um, how we want to serve the people, poor people as a servant, and uh, how we can reach the gospel. Uh, my my desire is not only by the preaching gospel, not only by the prayer, but also you know, reaching with them with the love and uh, support, mm -hmm. even like a mutual support with the financial support. Uh, mm -hmm. Whatever we can do, uh, like Bible says, not only by uh, word but also with action. We need to move. Uh, so and, our, let me just say word and action. I just wanted to underline that word you said there, word and action. So the two things yeah. go together side by side. Yeah. yeah. So I just wanted to make yeah. sure people heard that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we work with the action so that I want to um, reach the people in one way and another way, like uh, uh, by the orphanage home through the uh, different ministry, like sewing in school and a free tuition center among the poor people, travel people, like a rat catchers tribes, rat catchers are uh, tribes catchers. we are reaching. Yeah, rat catchers tribes we are reaching through the. Tell uh, us more. That. Tell me more about the rat catcher tribe. What is that? What is that? 
Okay. Uh, in Nepal, we have a uh, uh, red castle tribes. They are living in the uh, like uh, near the river and jungle, mm. uh, and that they are eating majority even today from uh, from beginning to till today. Mm. Uh, most of the red castles are eating a uh, rat. Uh, they uh, they are priority uh, eating the rat, not other animals, but they are mm. eating a rat, and they are uh, still. Uh, they are living the uh, without a home, a home, a homeless. They mm. are just a temporary, uh, like cottages. They are living and they're near the river. And today, all these rat catchers, their majority, uh, the income is a uh, fishing. Wow. And uh, one man fishing, and the whole family need to feed. And I see the many rat catchers, uh, children are not going to school mm. because of poor. And also, like when they became 13 years old. Two million years old, and they married. Mm. Uh, their children wow. are married. Daughters are married, and also mm. like uh, when their children are ten years old, they go to the other house mm. uh, as a, as a slave, like um, uh, cook for the people, uh, uh, honor, and also like um, as a shepherd, they are going to other house like five years, ten years because of the poverty. These rat castles are very mm. very poor uneducated and also dominant family in Nepal yeah. country. Like in Nepal, so, we have a uh, three category, yeah. like a, a re, uh, like a high, medium and low caste. Okay. So these yeah. red castes are low caste. People are not eating uh, wow. when they toss. People are not uh, 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 touching. When they toss, they, people not drink the water. They're very, very poor and they're very, very dominated by the society, community. Mm. So today okay. we are planting two churches over there. This, uh, pandemic time. Uh, well, let me, let, let me ask you. Let me ask you a question because I, I want to really, really, because I think this is such an interesting uh, group of people. I've never heard of the rat catchers before, so I'm really interested to. And and immediately, you know, from where, where I live in the UK, I'm guessing in many parts of the world where people could be watching this, the thought of rat. Most people would run away from rats rather than try to catch them. I think, <laughs> um, and to think of that as being your your livelihood and as you say these people are poor uh, low caste people so tell me how do you how do you share the love and the power of god with people who are so far away from any understanding of jesus people who are poor and uneducated what, what do you do how do you how do you let them see that god loves them uh first of all i went there uh with uh, uh understanding their needs what are the challenging and yeah. they, they asked everybody asks me Please help us. We don't have a toilet, mm. and we don't have a um, that we don't have a hand pumps. Mm. And uh, everybody and and also this pandemic time, everybody asking me, please provide us a rice a feed right. feeding, yeah. so that yeah. uh, I pray before God and I ask my some students, our Bible school students, mm. and also church member, uh, I request them, and uh, and I raise some funds and we uh, bless them. One toilet, uh, one one house, and um, another village. We built the uh, hand pumps, and the whole village are very uh, happy, mm -hmm. uh, very very. Uh, they are uh, that uh, glad, and uh, and also like more than two hundred rat castles family. We feed the rice uh, three times, and uh, and also I started interesting sewing school. Many ladies asking me, we need the skill development on mm -hmm. uh, the sewing school, and uh, three. Villages, we started a sewing school. Like each village has a uh, twenty-five uh, students uh, mm. learning free skill, uh, free development skill. Six months free uh, skill development, mm. and it's still going on. One village going on, wow. uh, and also uh, we started one village as a free tuition center. We start there, and uh, more than forty uh, rat castles children are joining a free wow. tuition center every day, two hours. So mm. that through this way, and also we distribute like a mosquito net, like mm. a, uh, and also uh, uh, like a bed cover, and also mm. uh, like a feeding bowl. We bless uh, uh, like eighty women. Through this, wow. uh, we are uh, we are showing the love of Jesus Christ, and also not only this one, but also we invite them to join mm. the our uh, evangelism healing crusade. And right. last uh, February. 12, 13, 14, they, everybody joined, all Musars, 
Uh, young people, children, and ladies, mm. all, everybody joined the, our mm. healing course for three mm. days. At that time, like uh, more than 100 mm. uh, miraculous people accept Jesus Christ as wow. Savior. And uh, this coming, uh, that April 4, Easter Sunday time, we have mm. a water baptism program. Mm. Like we expect more than uh, the 100 people will be uh, taking the water baptism. So through this, within the Two months, God is doing miracle, wonder sign through this love, love of Jesus Christ. So I learned yeah. one thing that we need to reach not only by the preaching of the gospel, but also showing the love of Jesus Christ to them. How God loves them. We need to show with the faith, with action. Through this, we are reaching the gospel yeah. among the rat cases today. Yes. Yeah, thank Amen. you. As, you. as you share that, it's just uh, so encouraging to hear you talk about it and when Jesus talked about the gospel, when he said what he had come in Luke 4, when Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he's anointed me. And then he, he talks about preaching. He talks about the year of God's favor, social justice, caring for the poor, the needy. And he talks about uh, healing the sight of the blind, the miraculous. And those three aspects of the gospel, the power of God to, 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 do mirac to do miraculous things, to things that could only be explained by saying God did that. But then also alongside that, to care practically for people in their situation. And I love the way that you explained it, Dan, that you know, the first thing you did for the rat catch people was to build them a toilet because that's what they needed. Um, and then, of course, then alongside of that, the the sharing of the gospel with people. So it's those things together, all combined, not separated, but combined together. Love in action, expecting God to do miracles, and then speaking, telling people who Jesus is. So just just tell, just tell, very quickly, because we're almost out of time, just quickly tell us again. So in Nepal, as you're doing those things, those those different power, uh, love, and, and getting alongside people, you mentioned a whole variety of different ways that you're doing that as you're joining Jesus in his mission. So just give me a quick run through again so we can just get a feel of what that's like for you. You mentioned some different things. So just let's let's tell me again. What what does it mean for you? What things are you doing to join Jesus in his mission? Uh, yeah, I'm doing the uh, senior pastor uh, in Nepal country. And we have a uh, we have a right now 50 churches all over Nepal. We uh like we are working together. My father is a pastor, founder mm -hmm. pastor, and yeah. I'm a senior pastor. And we have uh, many uh, pastors. Uh, right now, we have 50 churches all over Nepal. And also, yeah. uh, and also so you're, we are you're, doing... You're, you're, you're pastoring a group of 50 churches, right? That's one thing. What else are you doing? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And also, I'm doing the, like, uh, we have an orphanage home. 40 orphanage orphanage. Home. Yeah. 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 We started by uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. And also, we have a Bible school, online mm -hmm. Bible school. Like we have now 24 students every Sunday they come. Mm. Uh, and also uh, this coming uh, 14, April to 14 May, one month we are going to uh, uh, hold that uh, uh, mission, church planting uh, training that we are inviting to will uh, that missionary evangelist. Uh, the, after this training, we are planning the to will churches, the Himalayas mm. and the remote area. And also uh, I'm doing the uh, by the grace of God, sewing school that Red Cross uh, village, and mm. also different village that um, a free tuition center going on, uh, mm. and also we are we, uh, we are training every week. We are training the young people. We are two days. We are training the young people like a, a discipleship training. Mm. We are going to train every week our different uh, Himalayas and villages. We are reaching, and also every month we are doing the healing gospel crusade. Mm. Mm -hmm. Like uh, even this pandemic time, we did a February and this March also we have a crusade and every also we have a crusade. Speakers are from America and different country around mm -hmm. the world. But three mm -hmm. days we have a healing crusade. Every month we are doing like mm -hmm. uh, that time more than uh, 1,500 people accept Jesus Christ. Wow. Uh, and also, uh, <laughs> and also uh, we are uh, focusing that, um, that new church like a church planting in the mm -hmm. Red Castles. Right now we have two churches. Already, we started uh, like a two months before, and we are going. We are sending there the, some of our students, Bible school mm -hmm. students, sending there to preaching the gospel and uh, uh, preaching the every uh, Sunday service, so that uh, uh, so so that uh, 
God is using me in different way, one way and another way, reaching the gospel and win Nepal for Jesus Christ forever. Amen. So, Amen. Yes. Listen, man, we need to stop in a moment, but just one thing, and then a very last quick question. Um, G- Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And just listening to you, I'm, I'm feeling, I hope everybody that's watching this or listening to this is feeling it as well. But you're clearly somebody in your country where you are who's said yes to Jesus, I will follow you. And uh, the things that God is doing through you and in you are extraordinary. Uh, and we praise God for that. So let me just ask you one question. And I would like a really, really quick, short answer to this. Just uh, maybe one or two lines. Just, just So people watching this may be thinking to themselves, man, what he's doing in Nepal is great. It's wonderful. Um, how would you how would you encourage people all around the world to be joining Jesus in mission where they are? Not everybody lives in Nepal, but it's the same Jesus who's at work in, across the world. And he wants people to join him in his mission where they are, whether it's in the UK, the United States, somewhere in Africa or Latin America or somewhere in Asia, anywhere. Jesus wants people to join him in his mission. Just in a few words, how would you encourage any Christian to join Jesus in his mission where they are? What would you say to them? So um, I really encourage, I want to encourage those who are watching this uh, television so that we need to uh, see the visions from God and we need to hear the voice from the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So when we see the vision, when we receive the uh, vision from God and hear voice from the Lord, we need to focus that uh, whatever situation, whatever challenging, whatever uh, the travel come, whatever persecution come, we need to focus that our vision, our goal, that uh, our motives, our passion to reach to unreach uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ, all the nations. Bible says, the book of Mark chapter 16, verse 15, go and preach all the creation. And also, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 says, go and make discipleship all the nations and give the water baptism. So Bible did not say only priests, the one country or one village, but Acts chapter one, verse eight says that you will be witness when you will be received the Holy Spirit, that you will receive the power of God and you will be witness all Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and of the world. So I need to encourage all of you. So do not discourage, do not that um, feel alone and sadness. So we need to always focus Jesus and uh, the, as the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, seek first the kingdom of God yeah. and everything will be added to you. So we need to focus his kingdom, his ministry, harvest, how we win souls for kingdom of God. So Great. God Listen, I'm, I'm going to stop you there, Dan, because that is just, uh, you can't finish it any better than that. Seek first his kingdom and his harvest. Praise God for what you're doing, my friend. Thank you so much. God bless you. Okay, thank you for your time and that's given me this privilege, opportunity. Really, I appreciate you and thank you so much, Brother Dennis and all the root of International Ministry family. May God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.